We welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are here. Beginning of our new time as far as 10.30 morning worship. Uh, just be reminded that this evening we'll have our evening worship at 6 o'clock. And this coming Wednesday we'll have Bible study at 7 o'clock back in the kitchen area as well. Understand that you know, some of nights may be a little different. Uh, just to let you know ahead of time that I may pose out some questions now on Sunday nights to you and, and get more, maybe more interaction or uh, some more feedback as far as what we're going to be studying or what we're going to be looking at on Sunday nights as well. So just to let you know, maybe a little bit different. We'll see how it progresses and works out. Before Al comes to lead us in our call to worship, we will begin back up with birthdays uh, as far as letting people know whose birthday and who's not. So for the month of January, there are only two birthdays. One will may have his birthday. Uh, when is it? January what? Well, 12. And then Melinda, in January, what's we do it again? January 23rd. So I'm the 23rd. And then Will. Is anybody else born in January that we may, and I may have missed? Uh, anyone else? Those are the only two birthdays that I, that I have written down.
gentlemen, this morning we just thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have to come and assemble together, to worship together. Pray, Lord, for your leadership here. Thank you for this new year. And Lord, I know that you'll see us through it as you saw us through the previous ones. Bless us, Father. God direct us all. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Again, we do welcome all, and it's good to see all who are here with us. Uh, in the way of announcements on the, in the opposite side of the page, we both them. Again, remember, we will have evening worship this evening at 6 p.m. And then Wednesday night, we'll have our Bible study this coming Sunday, this coming Wednesday, I mean, at 7 p.m. back in the kitchen area. Uh, thanks to all who have given and gave to uh, Lonnie Moon for International Missions. We collected $256, which will go totally toward the work being done in uh, in foreign countries out of the United States, so all that will be done as well. And hopefully, if, if you have not, uh, I apologize, but I, I think I sent out cards and reminders to everyone concerning the new times as far as the Sunday school and worship time, uh, as far as with the ones that I had in the directory. So everyone should have got it basically an orange card. If you have not, it should be coming, but because I got, I've made one, I've made that one to myself, so I got it yesterday. So if you're not, I mailed them since Wednesday, so the mail may be a little bit slower. I don't, I don't know, uh, but you will get one, but uh, we'll just keep on reminding people of the new time uh, as for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and morning worship at 10.30. So keep them on everything else basically stays the same. Any other announcements? Um, only other thing to let you know and coming up, as for is coming up, understand that in February we will have a Valentine's banquet. That will be coming up uh, and, and hopefully give you more information on that uh, at a later date as well, so keep that in mind. Old Testament scripture is found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, the beginning of Proverbs here, as Solomon so writes in Proverbs in verse 7. Here, the key to the beginning of everything and how we need to look at it as we begin the new year, as Al so mentioned. In Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. Begin with the Lord. Walk with Him. Talk with Him. Seek His guidance and His leadership for the new year. We begin 207, begin it with the Lord. He is the absolute truth and the knowledge of all things. So keep that in mind in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. Begin with the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word and may we apply it to our lives each and every day. Let us continue as we sing unto the Lord. 635 of our final Bible. Oh, excuse me, my country took me out of turn. For he had a right there, man. 634.
Our New Testament scripture is found in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 36 and following. Here, as Peter has gotten up under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, and he reveals to all the people concerning Jesus, and that the fact that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah, and that he ascended, and that he arose on the third day. And here he proclaims toward the end of his message that he was given to the people there and proclaimed to them by the power of the Holy Spirit from Acts chapter 2, verses 36 and following. He says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. And he said, these are the facts. God has made this Jesus. And remember, back then there were many who were named Jeshu or Jesus or, or Joshua. And he says, this Jesus, that is the Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified, whom you crucified, O Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, and your children and for all who are far off for all whom the lord our god will call with many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them save yourselves from this corrupt generation those who accepted the message were baptized and about three thousand were added to that number that day same is still present today applies today as well Jesus Christ came, he died, he died for our sins, and that through him is eternal life. This is what he told Peter. And this is the message we need to go tell everyone. May God bless the reading of his word. May we tell it everywhere, wherever we go. In the way of prayer and prayer requests, in the back of your bulletins, there are written a few. I ask you to remember these, and of course, many others as well. Ms. Joy Sheep, who is still over at Gulf State Rehab, uh, she'll probably be there another week or so. Uh, she will be in right now in the process of being probably being moved to Greenbrier, guest uh, Greenbrier um, uh, nursing home on Robert. But it may be about a week or two before she goes there. So she probably I call the state for another week or two. She does have to have dialysis between two and three times a week. She she talks. She's very coherent. Uh, so if you could go see her, she would appreciate anyone who would go and see her at the Gulf State uh, Rehab while she's there. The visiting hours at Gulf State is from 12.30 to 8 p.m. at the Gulf State. And once you go to Greenbrier, then you can go basically almost any time you'd like to go at the, at the rehab so at that uh, facility, at that nursing home in Greenbrier. But she's doing good, uh, and, and she appreciates all your prayers. Miss Hattie is doing much better as well. She was in the hospital last week. They got a medication all disabbreviated. And so now she is doing good. She's back at the North Shore Living Center and back to what she used to do. And everything seems to be okay with her uh, as well. So remember these ladies and others as well. Um, the men and women in the military, continue to remember them and pray for them as well. Other prayer requests that you would like to share with us, either Thanksgiving or concern. Virginia. Okay. All right. So, so remember him. He's what, still in Texas, right? He lives in Texas. So one of them's here. Okay, I get mixed up with the with the ones. Okay. Well, remember him in prayer. Bernie. <laughs> you feel like the energizer of Rapidale? Okay. I mean, you got the drum and everything that you go around now. You can. <laughs> well, prayer thanks him because Bernie was in there and they had to change out the battery and it, and then it kept a little bit longer than what, he, what what him and Ann wanted. But he's doing good and we thank the Lord that he's doing good too. So that's good. Danny. Okay. Okay. Remember, remember him and the family. Absolutely, he lost one leg and hurt his other legs. Their legs seem to be okay, so remember that for sure. Tony. Uh, 
travel in mercy to Kathy and Sean. Okay. All right. Gloria. All right. Absolutely. Others? Ms. Dow? Please remember Bill, and he has a point number. Doctor on Tuesday by the skin in his wrist. Okay. Also, I need that she's kind of well, not kind of, she's sick. Okay. Also, prayer facing. All right. Show up. Sure. Okay. Remember that in prayer. Sandy. Pray for mom on tomorrow. She's gonna have to start this. Yeah, stress testimony. Show up, pass, and fly. Come on, son. I mean, that face is still with the house. I mean, she knows she ought to get through it, right? Sure, that ain't the opposite. Well, you can make me one. But, uh, but you, so you go to stress that tomorrow? Tomorrow morning, okay. All right, so remember Ginger as she goes through the stress test. Okay, she will. Mindy. Thanks, sweetie. Um, I'm going to take Okay. Okay, yeah, Mindy went to a, a college, I guess mostly predominantly college students uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Passion, and, uh, and that's the name of Passion, that's for with, uh, with everything, like she said, like 24,000 college students in Atlanta, uh, that's the way they could be there, so. Uh, Thanksgiving is. She went through that. She left uh, last Monday on New Year's Day, came back this past Thursday. So that's good. Others? Anyone else? Uh, just continue to remember each other and pray, pray for each other. Pray for the many that are still going through difficulties or whatever may be going on in their lives. So remember them in prayer, uh, home, or work, or whatever the case may be. And I always pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Friends, family, focus, family members, whoever, strangers, people we never even met. Pray for them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, we come before you this morning and we do thank you. We thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for all that you've done and are doing in all of our lives. We thank you for each other. We lift up in prayer the many, many people that are going through difficulties at work, at home, the many that are dealing with different types of physical problems and physical ailments. We lift them all up before you and ask for your help and for your guidance. We pray for traveling mercies, for those who are on the road, and for those who will be on the road. Watch over them, be with them, and help them. We pray especially for those who are lost, those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, friends, family members, co-workers, and people we've never met. And even any who are here today, we pray for salvation. Again, we lift up all the prayers, and the many unspoken prayers as well, the many things that we lift up to you in private that we're dealing with on a daily basis. We ask for your leadership, for your guidance, and for your help in all of our lives. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Let us continue as we sing unto the Lord. Walk toward him, turning to number 59. My Lord is living all the time. Let's stand.
thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of your blessings and for all that you've given to us. Lord, we ask at this time that all that is collected may be used for the furnace of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel. Lord, use this building, the grounds, and everyone in here. Use us all for your glory, for your purpose, and for the spreading of the gospel. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Before you will, if you have your Bibles to John chapter 9, the first 12 verses, here looking at what Jesus so is relating to all of us. John chapter 9, the first 12 verses. As you are turning, you know, as many so said concerning what truth has passion and true. Our mission, our goal here on this earth is to tell us of Jesus Christ, that they too may know him as their Lord and as their Savior as well. John chapter 9, the first 12 verses. As he, was, as he went along, he saw a blind man, that is Jesus. His, a blind man who was blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? <coughs> neither, this man, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. Not that they were sinless, but it wasn't the result of either one of their sins that this took place or happened, Jesus said. But it, it has happened so that the word of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is, as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he said, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claim that he was. Others say, No, he, is only, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. Or we would say, I am that man. How then were your eyes open, they demanded. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud, he put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed. Then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Interesting how God indeed works in the lives of people and whom God also uses in his work as well. Jesus is leaving the temple after his confrontation with the religious leaders of that day. He leaves the temple, and as he's leaving the temple, he passes the gate where a lot of people are there begging for alms or for whatever they can get because they cannot fend for themselves. So he's passing this gate that leads, that leads into basically the temple, so they're coming out of the temple. And he sees a blind man who is standing there and begging for alms. Blindness was, what was all too common Occurrence in Jesus' day. There were many, many who were blind. Matter of fact, I think even today they say at least one person every 20 minutes will go blind or is blind or whatever the case may be. The question Jesus, the question Jesus asked and their misconception about sin is one that many people have even today. As the disciples asked him, who sinned? He or his parents? Well, Jesus said, it's wrong. It's a misconception. You see, for if indeed it was for some sin that he had done, then think about it. All of us would be blind today because all of sin had fallen short of the glory of God. We see all sin is wrong in the eyes of God. So he says, you're wrong in, in your concept of who has, who has sinned. And then, of course, we are accountable for our own sins, so even the sins of the parents do not, well, not transferable to the children or that. Now, it is possible for children to suffer because of some of the sins of the parents back then as it even today. I mean, you have birth defects and other things because parents do not take care of themselves for whatever reason. Smoking, alcohol, drug-related, sexual relations or whatever the case may be. These things we have found throughout the years. 
sometimes do, as in the uh, case of unborn children, when they're born, they have birth defects or things that go wrong with them because of certain things that maybe parents have done. But because of a particular sin, this was a very misconcept, uh, this, this thing was, was not true, and Jesus is here relating to them, neither this man nor his parents had sinned is the reason for the man and his blindness who was born blind. This is the misconception. Again, many people hold to this even today, that certain things happen to us because of certain sins. Now, understand, again, sometimes because of things we do, things do happen to us. But it's not because of the fact that I do this one sin or I don't do this one sin that something will or will not happen to me. Again, if that were the case, God would be striking me down every, every time I walk outside or things that I do as well in myself. Because again, we all sin. We all fall short as forward with it. But again, we need to understand that this is not the case even here. Put it quite frankly. Here, God has allowed this man to be born blind so that at this particular moment in Jesus' earthly ministry, Jesus would come up and cure him. As a result, God would get the glory and receive glory and also to reveal that indeed Jesus is who he claims to be. I mean, there's no way of getting around it, as Jesus said. But this has happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. There's no other way, putting it quite frankly, that God does allow certain things to happen, even in our lives. And for what reason? To bring glory and honor to Him by what we do. One of my favorite people that I've always discussed and I've read up on is Fanny J. Cosby. She was, she was a perfect normal child, had some eye problems, went to a quack doctor after she was born. The doctor put these massive things upon her eyes and caused her to be blind. Did not have to happen, but the doctor, this quack, did this. And she was blind afterwards for all of her life. And she became very, very instrumental in proclaiming the gospel through songs and through her words. And within they even said that later on she even went to the same doctor and forgave him for what he did to her held no animosity whatsoever. But still, in all of her life, she still glorified and she still praised God. We sing a lot of the song, Blessed are sure, it's Jesus is mine. Sing it all the time. That's one of the ones, many songs that she has written, thousands of them, while blind, giving glory and honor to God. You know, sometimes there are no pat answers to the questions of human suffering. We can't answer them all. I don't have all the answers. You don't have, we don't have the answers, all the answers to why things go on, why things are alive, why things happen. Sometimes there are no answers. All we have to do is walk by faith. Trust God and say, Lord, I don't understand it, but help me with what is going on. Don't make the mistake so many others and so many people have made like the disciples. It is because God has struck me or him or her down for some type of sin. It's not the case. It's not always the case here. We don't know always. I guess many times, unlike Moses, when, when the people came to Moses one day and they wanted to do something, and, and, and he said, who am I? Am I God that I can do such and such? You see, we don't know the mind of God or the things of God. All we know is that God does love, God does care. And then he sent his son, so that through him we can have eternal life. We don't understand it all. But the song says, we'll understand it better by and by. We'll understand it better when we stand before him. Understand also that these miracles that were done by Jesus here and throughout the New Testament were meant to show his deity and his power to show that indeed he was the Messiah, the one who came from God and the one that God had sent to do his work. So observe several things here that was shown to us and that's revealed to us in these 12 verses of John chapter 9. First of all, notice Jesus' purpose here in the first five verses that he so displays and he shows. Notice in these first five verses, 
His purpose, it was to do what? It was to reveal the light of God. Notice he says, I am the light of the world. He is the light. Anybody else or anything else is not the true light. Notice he says he's there to reveal what? The truth of God's word, or the truth of and about God. His disciple, you are in error. What happened here was the glory of God. And it was also to believe, it was also to reveal the work of God. That God is indeed working in the lives of people and also does care. God sovereignly chose to use this man's affliction for his own glory. To reveal to all that again, that the light of God has come. And again, that Jesus is the light of the world. As Jesus so reveals here, as he so says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, it doesn't mean the whole world's going to go dark. What he's talking about here is the light of the gospel, the light of Jesus. God's working in and through him while they are there and what's taking place there. To show that God has compassion, that God does care, and that God is able to overcome even the impossible if God so chooses to do so, if he is so willing to do so. Understand that God is not always willing that this would happen or that would happen. But we're here to glorify him and understand that Jesus came to do what? His major purpose was to do the work of God. What is the work of God? The work that God wanted him to do was to come to die on the cross for our sins so that through him we could have eternal life. That was the reason for Jesus coming. He came to die. He came we have eternal life. That was his purpose of coming. This is why Jesus came. Amazing. The word of God. Secondly, we see in verses 6 and 7 as well, we see Jesus' power. The power of Jesus. Here as he so demonstrates to us and to also his disciples as well as the man who was born to die. Concerning it. Notice, what did Jesus use? He used something that no one would ever even think of. He used mud. He took little mud that you see outside on the ground. He spit in his hand and he mixed it up in his hand. Nurses here. Very unsterile one. Very unsterile. Then put it in the eye. Can you imagine? You cringe. Oh, I know my wife would. She's, she's a stickler for sterile things. There is no five second rule, ten second rule, something falls in the floor. I mean, that's it. You got to throw it away. You know, as far as with that. But, you know, step, but very unsterile that you see in here. But he takes, he takes his mud, spits in it, mixes it up, and he places it on the man's eyes. And what was it? We see he as he applies it. And notice he commands the man to do what? To go to the pool of Siloam and wash. Again, the lesson here was to show that Jesus was from God. That he was the Messiah. This was his purpose. That he was doing the work of God. He was doing it. And that he was sent here by God. If you remember, back over in John chapter 8, he revealed this a little bit to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and even to the people who came to hear. He revealed to them a little thing concerning why he was here. In John chapter 8, verse 12, he, Jesus spoke to them again. The people, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then he went on the same verse 16 of that same chapter uh, as well. He revealed to them, but, I, but if I do judge, my decision was right because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. And then in verse 29 of that chapter, he revealed to them again concerning who he was and what's to take place. He says, the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. See, Jesus came to do the work of God Almighty. Jehovah God, Elohim. And he was indeed God who came in the flesh, but doing the work of God. Just as God the Father 
has the power so that Jesus, who is from God and who is God who came in the flesh, also has that power or had that power. There were certain things that Jesus did being born as a human being. He didn't limit himself as far as two until after his death and it was, then it was limitless. But he limited himself. But still, even with all that, we see that he had the power to heal and to do things as well because of who he was. If you remember back in Luke chapter 5 and verse 20 and following, when Jesus healed the paralyzed man and what he told the people there who were looking at and marveling at this paralyzed man and as Jesus was going to heal this man, when what he said concerning it reveals indeed that he was from God and that he was God who was in the flesh. Notice he told them back in Luke chapter 5, verse 20 and following, the Pharisee, uh, when, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? For who can forgive sins but God alone? And they're right. But what they did not realize was standing before them was God in the flesh. Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked. Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to do? Or which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. See, he's relating to them. I am here doing the work of God, and not only am I doing the work of God, but I am also God in your presence. I am God who came in the flesh, as he, as he relates to them. Then he said to the paralyzed man, I tell, you, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And immediately he stood up in front of them and took, his, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and say, we have seen a remarkable thing. We have seen remarkable things today. And that, again, we need to understand, Jesus came here to reveal that indeed he was in God, giving praise, glory, and honor to God as well. And again, what the people did not realize and what they missed was the fact that God was in their presence. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit all the same. One God, three persons. Hard to comprehend, but yet, it was there. We see this. This is the power of God. And then the last thing we see is Jesus' promises. The promises of Jesus. Notice, what he, what he, as he says, uh, if you back up to verse 7 and follow the rest of it, so the man went, washed, and came home seeing. His neighbors, and all those who had formerly seen him begging asked, is this the same man who used to sit and beg? Is this the same man who was blind? Some claim that he was. Others say, well, no, he just looks like that man. However, then his eyes were open, and, he, and they asked him, how were your eyes open? He replied, the man called Jesus. I am that man. You see, what did the man do? Here, he relied upon what Jesus had spoken to him. The man went and he washed. The man was made completely whole. The man was a walking witness. He obeyed the command of Jesus. He obeyed him how? By faith. He had not seen Jesus, but he could not before. He did, maybe he'd heard about Jesus, but Chances are maybe not. He was at that gate asking for alms, asking for help for his own life. Instead, Jesus came to him and gave him his sight, gave him his life back again. And he believed Jesus and his word. How do we know? Because it says that he went and he washed through the salon. He believed what Jesus told him. He was resting upon the promises of Jesus. Jesus said, go and wash, and you will see again. Wash your eyes, or you will no longer be blind. And as he washed, what happened? His eyes were open, 
and his life was changed forever and ever and ever. Again, notice he says, I went and I washed. I did as he commanded. By, by, by obeying Jesus, what happened? He was delivered from darkness and came into the light. See, this is what happens when Jesus comes in our hearts and our lives as well. By believing in his word. Believing what he had said, as the word of God so says. Here, in the very scriptures that we probably know by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. See, we trust in the words of God. We trust in his promises as well. Like the man who was blind, Jesus applied the mud on his eyes and told him to go and wash. So too, Jesus applies to our heart and our lives. And he tells us, trust me, believe in me. I am the light of the world. You too can be that light by putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. He will change your life forever and ever and ever. The question is, has he changed your life? Do you, are you truly a changed person? <clears throat> the beginning of the year, 2007, how do you begin it? You begin it with Jesus. You begin it by resting upon his promises that have been given to us. He tells us here, believe me, trust in me. Do you trust in Jesus Christ? And have you trusted in him for your salvation? Let us stand. Almighty God, we come before you. We thank you for your words and for what you have revealed to us. If there is anyone here this morning whom you have called, whom you have talked to, you have revealed yourself to, and they are in need of salvation, I pray that they will come unto you today. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hand number 282, Living in Jesus.
watch other things coming that time. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.